Good evening, everyone. We are Project Bruno, and we're here to help you find your next trip. So a few of us went out to Clyde's last night after the session, and um, you can all attest to the fact that the mentors were slugging Yanglings. They basically drank Clyde's clean, drank them dry of Yanglings. So the problem is, how are we going to figure out their next beer to drink? There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of beers. How are we going to organize all that and make a decision? Our solution is like a Pandora for beer. We have a test database where we have beers, and we've looked at 66 different defining characteristics of those beers. We couple that with a unique algorithm we built, and when we're given a beer, a Yingling, we know they like it, how can we turn that into a new recommendation? We run it through our product and output a list of genetically similar beers. So um, how we've chosen to implement that in the prototype Shay's going to demonstrate. <coughs> all right, so we put all the power of our inner genome analysis in the palm of your hand in a mobile app. So let's say uh, I'm looking for a beer that's like my favorite uh, absolute beer. So I'm going to type in Pabst. Uh, there it is, Pabst Blue Ribbon. So I come back with beers that are genetically similar to Pabst Blue Ribbon. Front Extra, St. Pauli. I could go for St. Pauli. Yeah, it looks like a good beer. So you get a little info on it and make a decision from there. Maybe get a beer. After I'm done with it, if I like it or not, I can flag it that I liked it, and that'll calculate you know, the next time I want a beer suggestion. So let's say we want to get a little more complicated than that, and uh, change just some, some fine properties of the beer. So Brooklyn Brown Ale is a pretty good beer. Yeah, Brooklyn Summer, I don't think I want that. I think I want something like the Brooklyn, but a little less bitter. So I'm going to go to similar beers. Brooklyn Brown. And yeah, I'm going to adjust the bitterness. So by sliding the bitterness over, I get a beer that's just a little bit less bitter than the one that I like. So I think we'll give that a try. So to create a viable business, we need to match the cool technology to a compelling market. We're going after the intersection of two different markets here. So we have the 200 billion plus industry of beer in the U.S. And by Christmas, Nielsen tell us, tells us that one in every two Americans is going to own a smartphone. So uh, the intersection of those two markets we think is really big. That's what we're going after and we think those markets are here to stay. Still, what's a compelling market if we can't capture any of the revenue from it? Um, our monetization uh, ideas are threefold. One, we're going to advertise on our mobile app. Uh, there'll be regular and premium advertising. Two, we're going to generate a regular newsletter to our users. So they'll find out about uh, beer trends based on the data we're collecting from them. We can highlight a, a beer of a month and create uh, a secondary advertising platform. Third, uh, once we get kind of the critical mass of traffic we're looking for, we'll have a whole lot of data on relative popularity of uh, different drinks, how many times certain characteristics are searched and whatnot. That data, that, those, uh, that market information will sell to larger brewers and, um, and producers of beer. So the, the timing, the approach of this. Um, 2012, we want to target DC. First quarter, we're going to start in one neighborhood, Georgetown, uh, DuPont Circle. Our product is uh, community specific, so we're going to roll that out community by community to start. In year two, we're going to go to other major US cities. Um, year three, we're going to be nationwide. 
So the future of the technology, um, we, want to, we want it to be highly social. So you saw the demo, um, the user experience doesn't end there. So we want people to communicate their preferences. Yeah, Clyde's uh, whole inventory, and we'll take questions. So I, I know that uh, there's a few applications that try to do this with wine. Um, why haven't they been massively successful? So um, this market is is actually not sparse, um, but but we think people haven't been successful because. There's a lot of similarity among the current participants. Uh, namely, what they're doing is they're generating suggestions based on subjective data and comments from other people on the internet. Our approach is different because it's primarily quantitative, it's analytical, it's what the data says. Um, so people are hovering around the space, but we think we've uh, pinned down something different we're going to do. Are you at all focusing on sort of the buy now kind of opportunity? Like if you're saying, oh, I'm just in this beer, kind of Point of sale, like on, on the mobile app. Yeah, yeah it's how far it is to buy it, or could just buy it right yeah. now. Yeah, 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 it. yeah. Um, we we've definitely thought about that. We're, we're as you notice, we're kind of hedging our bets with uh, different monetization ideas. Uh, that one's definitely on the horizon. I don't think it'll be the first one or two we try, but um, yeah. Yeah. One of the options we want to have in place is when you do drink a beer and you say feel like you're not, you can say where you're drinking it. What you're eating it with. I was waiting for you guys to talk about the food there. there. Yeah. Yeah. In the so description. I, is, is what's, is like the, the unique approach here, so Pandora, map, the music genome, you're mapping the beer genome? That's right. Okay. Uh, it's what people like about beer. Oh. And could you not have like an in-store feature maybe where like um, you have a screen that's dedicated to this and it's underneath the corona thing, you know, you could be kind of, a store could be having a screen that's in this. Like when you buy a virtual white person, they are the best thing you know,